Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. I'm one of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, joined by Jay Gilbert. How are you doing, hey, Jay? Hey, Michael. I'm doing well. How are you, brother? Not too doing bad. Okay? Not too bad. Yeah. 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 Awesome. I was like, I, I wasn't there last week, was I? No, I wasn't. No, you. It was a, you... Oh, it was a last minute fire that I had to put out for a client. That's right. And it happens. The show must go on, right? Yeah, exactly. And we do this for each other all the time. Like, all you know, I would say in the six years or however long we've been doing this together, you could count the number of shows that one of us has missed probably on one hand because we're, we're typically there every week yeah. together. But the good news is, is one of us can say to the other, look, I got to put out this fire. And it's like, OK, let's roll. Yep. Go. Exact, exactly. We either, we either reschedule the guest or the show goes on and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So fire, fires are something we're, we're, we're very used to, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you know, things just don't always go according to plan and that's not the problem. You know, it's really more about how are you going to solve the problem and move on? And well, that's, yeah, and, you know, and, and in this case, the the fire was shockingly Facebook related. You take I that mean, back. <laughs> yeah, good lord, you mean Facebook? There's been a lot of that problem. lately, Michael. I was There's just going to lot. I, no, I was just going to say that's, you know, if 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 you're a heavy admin user on Facebook, they're changing so much stuff. It's breaking stuff. Things are moving and disappearing, and um. This was exactly that case. I had a yeah. I had a client um, who, if you're not aware, Facebook pages are changing to a new design, and they've kind of been pushing you on it. Do you want to accept? Do you want to accept? Do you want to accept? And 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 my attitude has always been, don't accept any Facebook change right out of the not gate yet. because it's usually ninety nine percent of the time broken and loss of features and everything else. Wait until you're forced to take it. Wait until you wake up one day and there's no option, but it's changed. Well, I, I subscribe and, to that same thing. Yeah, I had, especially when it comes to Facebook, but I had a client who accepted the change to a new design and oh my God, it was just like, you didn't read the, the fine print about what's not offered now, what's broken, what changed. You know, all of a sudden, you know, I, as an admin, lost immediate access to the page because now I have to log in a different way. And it was it was an absolute nightmare because you couldn't schedule posts. That was a feature that was still not fixed yet. Um, people couldn't tag your page. That was a feature that hadn't been fixed yet. And I was just like, you know, there's nothing we can do. And, and, and I, I went in and I searched Facebook's help and it was like, okay, if you want to revert back, you can, here's what you've got to do, but understand this is what happens. I'm like, fine. It's only been 10 minutes. We're not going to screw anything up, follow their directions. It's, uh, shockingly, their own directions don't work because they, oh they, goodness. they, Facebook has removed the ability to revert back to the old page design. Oh boy. Just hasn't reflected that in their help section. Yeah. So it's just a constant nightmare of Yeah. Of it's problematic and I'm I'm like you. I wait until the end because you want all these problems to be these bugs to be worked out by the time it gets to you. Yep. Right? And if you wait until kind of the end there, there's more of a chance that some of those bugs will have come up and been addressed. Um, I never want to be, you know, uh, the first in the pool. Yeah. F F you know, listen, I'm a tech geek my whole life. I love playing with beta software. I have zero interest in beta testing anything for Facebook because it is usually so bad, so yeah. buggy, you know, features that have been tried and true features for years, all of a sudden disappear completely changed it's been right. moved well, you where you find, find them right it's moved and, and and they provide no documentation none whatsoever about what changed where it moved to i mean this has always been a pet peeve of mine but you know if you are a, a heavy mobile app user when you update your apps 
a lot of them will come up and say, here's what we fixed. Here's what we changed in this app as you're mm-hmm. updating it, which is great because that's like yeah. clues me into a new feature. The bug has finally been fixed. Facebook's app updates are always, oh, we just squashed a few bugs. We made some changes to make your life easier. Never mm-hmm. tells you what it is. Mm-hmm. Never. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's certainly uh, challenging. And I like playing with betas uh, just as much as you do, but not when I'm working. You know, I like to do that separately and explore things. But when you've got a job to do and you're working with a release cycle or a launch, the last thing you want to do is go in and try to figure out what's been changed. Yeah, exactly. So basically, I spent, you know, an entire day last week. Googling, mm-hmm. going into Facebook groups, asking questions. And, and believe me, I wasn't the only one. There's I a know. lot of people that were just like, where did this go? What happened here? What do you mean I can't revert back? It's like, yeah. 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 So that's why you weren't on the podcast that's last why week. I wasn't on the podcast. I Believe me, I'd much rather have been on the podcast. Oh, I know. I know fire. you would this yeah. fire um so uh before we get into um this week's guest we want to just uh show some love to some of our uh supporters and our sponsors here uh real quick shout out to bruce and everybody at hypebot and over at bands in town thank you for thank everything you, bruce. you do to continue to spread the word on the music biz weekly podcast and of course, Banzoogle.com, built by musicians for musicians. Banzoogle is an all in one platform that makes it easy to build a beautiful website and EPK for your music. Banzoogle powers the websites for tens of thousands of musicians around the world, from weekend warriors to Grammy winners. All the features you need for a professional website are already built in, including hosting and a custom domain name dozens of fully customizable design templates, tools to sell your music and merch commission-free, commission-free crowdfunding and fan subscription features, mailing list tools to grow your fan list and send newsletters, social media integrations, and of course, live tech support from their musician-friendly team seven days a week. So we got a little offer here for our listeners. Head over to bandzoogle.com register and try it for free for 30 days and use the promo code music biz weekly and you'll get 15 percent off the first year of any subscription and of course discmakers.com we know it's a digital world but there's still an important role for physical media for today's musicians Digital royalty payments can be so small that selling products like CDs, vinyl t-shirts, online and at gigs has become an, an, an important income generator. There you go. For every CD you sell at a gig, you might need roughly 3,000 streams to make the same amount of money, and that's a lot of streams. Our friends at Disc Makers are the place to go for your discs and other physical media, including vinyl, USB drives, and even t-shirts. So a little offer we put together with Disc Makers. Head over to discmakers.com, place an order for 100 or more CDs, and when you check out, use the code FREEBIZ, and you will save up to $150 in shipping. So this week's guest, Jay. Yeah, we've got a great guest this week. We have Diego Farias, co-founder, CEO of Amuse, which is a, a new cool, innovative label slash distribution company hybrid. Yeah, it is. You really, you really got to listen to this interview to, to understand what they're doing. They're not just another distributor and they're not just another label. Um, They're, they're really separating themselves from the pack of distribution options that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. So let it roll. Diego from Amuse. Build a stunning band website in minutes with Banzoogle. Go to Banzoogle.com to start your free 30-day trial and use the promo code MUSICBIZWEEKLY to get 15% off the first year of any subscription. Today we're joined by Diego Farias, co-founder, CEO of Amuse. Diego, so great to see you all the way from Stockholm, Sweden. Yes, sir. So good to see you, Jay. So good to see you, Michael. Hope you guys are staying healthy. Thank you. You you too. So. 
So tell us a little bit about a muse. So if you were in an elevator with someone and they had never heard of uh, a muse and they were wearing a mask, what would you tell them <laughs> about a muse? Well, uh, I would tell them so many things and hope that we would be stuck in the elevator forever uh, for some weird reason. But um, yeah, I guess the, 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 the brief elevator pitch is that Amuse is a new generation of digital services for independent artists. We do free distribution. We've built a bunch of cool premium features and we have artist services as kind of the, the crown jewel on top of all of this. So um, from, from the beginning, truly... Uh, a tech play. Uh, so the company is a Swedish company. Um, a lot of the really cool music tech has come out of this country and for some sure reason has. it seems to be a great place to start a music technology company. So there were a ton of stuff that we wanted to uh, change and address in the music industry and, and Amuse is, is the result of all of those ambitions and passions and crazy ideas. Well, so so let's let's approach it from this. I mean, one of the big features that Amuse has is is free distribution. I mean, right. You've got you've got a premium tier. Yep. But what what drove you? What were you looking at in other distribution offerings out there? Because there's you know more than you can count companies that offer distribution. What did you see that was they were doing wrong that you wanted to do differently? So I think um, the main challenge for me was was not so much pricing. That was not what we were trying to solve with free distribution, as ironic as that may sound. Um, it was about accessibility. Um, I think that was the main obstacle that we were observing uh, in the industry. Um, I had been traveling around in, in Sub-Saharan Africa. I had grown up in a suburb to Stockholm. Um, I know that uh, you know not everyone has a credit card or access to a computer or there were some, some fairly arbitrary obstacles when we were observing this space that seemed to be able to be solved by creating modern technology and also lowering the barrier of entry. And so creating a mobile first solution, which was how we launched Amuse back in 2017, and combining that with um, removing the main entry, uh, barrier, entry barrier, which was uh, the payment obstacle, um, I think that was that was our response to accessibility, and it turns out that you know even though I had been traveling in sub-Saharan Africa, the challenges around this type of or the accessibility challenges look the same for a person like Lil Nas X who was in Atlanta, or in a poor suburb of Atlanta, or you know um, a guy like Yasin in a poor suburb of Stockholm, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So it was a it was a global challenge of accessibility, and and we addressed it head on with two, uh, a combination of technical innovation and also kind of price disruption. So, so a few, go ahead, Michael. I was just gonna say, so, you know, kind of a, a let's get right to the, the meat mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. If somebody's been using any of the other distribution outlets that are out there, why should they switch? Why should they move their next release over to Amuse? What are they going to find that's going to make them go, okay, this is worth it. This, you know, I may never heard of the company before, but you've got this, which they don't have. And maybe it's as simple as just customer service, a person that's actually going to help you. I don't know, right. but what, what, what do you, what do you tell that independent artist of, okay, this is why you need to switch. Well, I think the answer to all of this comes from just the origin story of Amuse. I mean, this, this was a, a, a project that was started on curiosity and trying to provide a service for artists that we didn't think was out there. So for me, the answer goes back to that. We build really innovative services and we build services based on the interactions we have with artists. We have solutions that are based on that. That's why we were the first to launch mobile services. That's why we have continued to innovate really, really at a really, really quick pace and invest super heavily in technology to build services uh, for independent artists in 2021. That would be where I would start uh, to answer that question. Um, and then there's a, a ton of fun and cool things that we've added to um, the service as we have progressed that I think are really cool features that benefit artists, everything from splitting royalties to our fast forward program to the ability of being picked up and signed to our label. 
Uh, so the 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 quest, sorry, the answer could be short or it could be long. But the short answer would be that we are uh, building really innovative services for independent artists around the world because we care and we want yeah. to do that. And I think my one of the observations when we were looking at the space before the company was started was there wasn't truly so much innovation happening in the distribution space. There was a natural gravitation to all of these services by aspiring artists. A number, by the way, that has absolutely skyrocketed during Corona and, you know, before that too. Uh, some, uh, you know, it's a it's a group of ambitious thousands and millions of artists out there that want uh, services that are uh, modern and and that are, uh, you know, that solve the needs and the issues that they have in their in their artist careers. And I think we were looking at the space, not so much innovation, not so much going on. Uh, this is not to be disrespectful to the other players in the space, but you know, I wouldn't argue that most of the distribution players out there are music tech companies. They are fairly basic builds uh, with a fairly basic solution of transferring one file from the artist into the different services not so much has happened in terms of trying to innovate that service offer because the artists are just flocking in those directions because those were the only solutions available in the market. So yeah. our approach has always been innovate, to build solutions that are innovative, that provide uh, new or uh, so solutions to the problems that artists have. And it becomes a more compelling offer, at least from my personal point of view. And obviously I'm tooting my horn here as hard as I can. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And you just touched on something, innovation. And I think that there are plenty of players in the space. So how do you rise above that clutter? Well, you you differentiate yourself by innovation. And one of the things that jumped out at me, and you just touched on it, was fast forward, you know, where you can pay future royalties based on predictions from AI. Can you kind of explain what that means? Yeah, of course. I mean, it it goes once again without sounding like a broken record here. All of these things tie back to what I was talking about. It's a genuine interest into solving pain points. Sure. And that's where all of our solutions stem from. And I think um, one of the th one of the early observations for us was that, you know, you can't you're a distribution artist or you're a signed artist or whatever, but few people uh, can just take their song or their songs and go to a bank and be like, hey, you know what? I'm doing $4,000 a month. I want to buy a small house out on the countryside. Can I, can I kind of give you my song and you give me some money? I don't want to sell my rights necessarily. That system hasn't really existed. There have been uh, record label advances, but they have come with all sorts of requirements on the artist side, ties down the rights, probably holds on to the rights forever, et cetera, et cetera. So what we were observing was a need to... Um, to get royalty advances, to be able to use your, your music, to be able to uh, invest into new recordings or you know, pay the electricity bill or whatever it could be. And there's a, natural, a naturally slow process of royalty payouts that doesn't uh, you know, benefit the artists. So there were two uh, things that could be solved in one, uh, with one solution. One was you know, access to capital, uh, which goes back to the whole accessibility uh, solution once again. And the other thing was, uh, you know, being able to use all of these uh, cool data uh, points that we have been collecting, which are now insanely large, um, where we were already kind of predicting the future of tracks to identify tracks that we wanted to sign to our label. Uh, so there were two components that could be combined into a really cool solution. And that's where fast forward comes from. So what fast forward basically does is it's scanning all of the kind of north of a million tracks or whatever it is that we have uh, on our platform that um, that are out in different DSPs all the time. And it's constantly making revenue predictions. How is this song performing? Why has it changed? How much is it worth in the future? And then those offers are, are packaged into fairly neatly uh, packages. Sometimes there are four months, sometimes there's six months of future royalty earnings, and then they're just pushed out. This entire process is entirely automated. It gets pushed out into the apps or into the web service where a user can see, ah, you know what? I have a hundred bucks in my account right now, but really good traction. Uh, Amuse is advancing me $4,000 instead of the hundred bucks I have available now. I can use that money to market my music or like one of our uh, bands uh, that we have talked about sometimes when we have 
presented this this feature, uh, Blue Americans, they um, used their money to be able to go and do a gig in London. They they lived somewhere else and had to buy tickets and had to rent equipment or whatever it was. So um, yeah, I think it, I got a little bit lost there. Actually, is, but, is, uh, is there is there a a criteria that needs to be met before you would ad advance somebody? I mean, is there an earnings threshold? Will you advance somebody, you know, $200 if that's what the projection is? Or are you only interested once they meet that point of it's going to be a $5,000 or $10,000? How do you how do you decide when to accept it? Yeah. Well, back to the accessibility uh, conversation, which is truly in our DNA. I mean, the reality is that the people who have been able to do advances have been of significant size, uh, or it's an a and signing and the advance is kind of based on your future potential. Right. But most other people are, are um, you know, it, it's not a product that is available to most people if they're not making considerable amounts of money. I mean, most, 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 most independent artists, it's not even, they don't even think that's an option to them of course what of course no I, I i couldn't agree more but the reality is that the concept of advance or just using your music to be able to advance yourself um money that you will be earning in the future is something that is relevant to a lot of artists so if you look at i know spotify made some comments about how many people or or maybe it was the conversation that's going on in the uk right now it kind of outlined how many artists around the world can actually make a living from their music then there's the millions of people who aren't uh, making an entire living out of their music, but they might still need, like you were saying, $200 or $100 or even $60. And the reality is that we go very, um, we go down to fairly low amounts and advance, you know, $60 to $100 in the kind of lower thresholds. And the, the reality in COVID times and even before COVID times is that I'm not going to put any type of value in, or, or, or I'm, I'm not going to judge if someone needs to advance themselves 60 or $100. Their reality is different from my reality, perhaps, and maybe the 100 bucks helps them do whatever it is they need to do right. in their life. Yeah, and, and it's, if, it's, it's relatively safe for that, you, right, Diego? I mean, because yeah. you're just looking at predictability based on streaming mm -hmm. more than anything else, I would imagine. It's certainly not... Right you know, physical sales or downloads, it's on streaming and, and you have a track record there. So you can just look and make, you know, it's basic math, really. And it just, it just means- <laughs> I, I love how you the, call it basic math because <laughs> the guy who's doing all of the cool uh, mathematics and uh, algorithms have tried to ex has tried to explain the yeah. exact method a few times. Well, it's the, easy to say for me because I'm not doing it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, let's talk a little bit about- you know, Amuse is 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 Amuse a distribution company or is Amuse a record label? Is it a hybrid? Because some of the things you're talking about, the functionality is primarily distribution, and a lot of labels today are outsourcing a lot of things like PR and mm -hmm. sync and social media and things like that. Is Muse a label or a distribution company? Well, with the risk of uh, sounding unsure about what type of a company I run, I, I would say it's all of those things, uh, you know, and, and maybe that type of a combination or hybrid, as you uh, put it, doesn't really have a good name yet, uh, because we're used to differentiating between distribution companies and labels. And I don't know exactly why that benefits what we're doing. Amuse is doing all of these services under the same roof. They complement each other. They work together. They create a um, situation of, of, you know, success because they collaborate with each other. The yeah. fact that we are using the distribution uh, side provides us with incredible knowledge about where music is going, what type of genres are popping up, what type of sounds are changing. That type of information feeds our label teams that can make really informed decisions uh, based on that, and then this trove of data that we're collecting also allows us to um, to make really, really interesting bets and, and decisions. So for me, it, it, it makes perfect sense for a record label, music distribution company, whatever, formed in 2021 or, or later, if you want, um, to think about the world in this way. 
uh, we are not bound or, or, you know, by any shackles of the past or, or routines or, or structures of the past. We could do whatever the heck, excuse the expression, we want it. Um, and we are. Now, when it comes to the label side, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning this. Basically, the distribution business is almost like the, the, using the baseball analogy, it's the minor league. That's where you're looking for potential talent that could explode. The fast forward technology is helping you identify those artists that have future potential. And it sounds like then you, you have that opportunity to basically say, hey, we see what you guys are doing and what you could do. We'd like to move you up to the next level here our side of a record label that we are running, kind of like graduating you from an independent artist straight into a deal. Um, are you, do you look at all genres, all styles of music? Does it matter to you what the music format is as long as it's got that future potential? First of all, uh, I would use the last 30 seconds or something and, and condense it into a slide and use it for a future uh, presentations because I think it's, it's, it's a very succinct way of describing uh, this, this journey that we are talking about, uh, about providing different types of services at different types, uh, at different times in an artist's journey. And if you think about it the way you described it, it makes a lot of sense. And that's how I have been trying to describe it. The baseball analogy was new for me, but um, I'll use that in the... In the, in the <laughs> um, so, sorry, exactly what was the question again? So, well, got... so, so the question ended up being, so are you looking at all potential artists, yeah. all oh, potential oh, genres, yeah. all potential yeah. formats? So, because it all that matters, I would assume all that matters to you is is the data showing future business that's worth signing? Right. So my answer would be uh, to answer it in two ways, perhaps. First of all, this is not um, a data box with a bunch of uh, lab coats and, and cool goggles and whatnot. This is uh, music lovers who started this company because we fundamentally believe in talent and we believe in good music. That's why we run a music. Um, we have the advantage, though, of all of this cool data, which allows us to make really informed decisions about genres where we perhaps are not, uh, you know, seasoned uh, experts. So to highlight kind of where we are right now, the three biggest projects we have on the label side is one uh, Turkish guy in a trap based type of a genre, which I can I can assure you is not necessarily our strength. Uh, another is an American pop artist, and the third is an, uh, a British um, hip hop drill act. So those three couldn't be, they, they have right. nothing in common, the three different uh, artists. And, and still, they make up our three top uh, signed artists. So I think it, it, it highlights and it answers your question in a way. Uh, but I prefer the other answer, which is, we sign talent because we love the music. We uh, love working with that particular talent and we believe that we can add value to their projects. Uh, and then the, the kind of how that breaks down into genres and stuff like that. Yes, perhaps we are a bit more agnostic there than you know what an island records could be, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So does the label, could, could an independent artist um, get signed to your label without being part of your distribution? No, we sign exclusively from, from our- From service. your distribution pool. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And how do you make money? Because I had read that artist retains 100% royalties and rights. Yep. Is it an annual fee? Is it per release? How, how, do, you, how do you pay the bills? Well, um, with great difficulty every month. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say, you know, we, we outlined this kind of a muse journey. And, uh, and so I'll just add where we monetize and I think it will make a lot of sense. So we have an entry level service, which is free to use. It's a little bit more limited in, in what it offers, but theoretically anyone on the planet using a phone or a web uh, or a computer can log on, become members, sign up, uh, release a song free of charge. We don't make money from that service, but it's a great way for us to get more people into our ecosystem. Um, on top of that is our pro services, where there is a monthly 
price plan and a yearly price plan. Um, on top of that, there's the fast forward service where we charge a fee. And then on top of that, there is our record label where we do revenue splits on the royalties, uh, depending on you know, the structure of that deal. So there are a couple of different ways in which we uh, monetize, but uh, you know, we are a company who has the ambition to monetize our services because we think that we add really strong value in the different uh, value propositions that we uh, put out towards uh, the artist community. So, um, but with that said, we also believe in this model of allowing people to hop on our uh, free distribution service to be able to become a part of the global music industry. Cool. Tell me a little bit about this uh, Meetem Artist Accelerator program. I saw a couple of things in the press about that. What, what was the Artist Accelerator all about? I mean, I think the artist accelerator is, is that's what we do. I mean, that's uh, technically what we do. So we, we always seek different types of opportunities with, uh, with conferences. And we've had a really good relationship with Medium for the last couple of years. Um, we, we, we obviously want to participate in, in settings where new talent is being discovered, uh, not only because we like new talent, but also to be able to place our services among the right types of audiences. Um, so for us, the Artist Accelerator program at Medium has been a great opportunity, of course, to, to uh, you know, find a partner that has similar types of beliefs that we do. And, and it's been really, really fun. So there's been a couple of really cool talent that has come out of that collaboration in the last uh, couple of years. And uh, regretfully, last year, uh, it didn't happen in the same way. But uh, let's see if it happens this year in June instead. Yeah. Kind of building on that baseball analogy, you know, this yep. whole farm club, you know, where you can pull players, you know, from the minors to the majors. I know one of your uh, competitors has begun a partnership uh, with Republic uh, and others. Are you looking to keep people on your platform or is there kind of a path to where you can partner if something blows up Will you keep it there or is there some type of an opportunity where it can kind of move up to the majors? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it might not come as a surprise to you, but we have been approached by probably, we have been approached by every major um, by now. And, uh, and the proposition has always been, hey, why don't you just hand over that uh, great right arm whenever he starts uh, doing you know, really, really well and we'll mm -hmm. move him up to the Mets or whatever the team would be. And, you know, the reality is that I think that we manage really, really well with the resources we have, with the approach we have. And I think that we really do have a strong proposition for talent that is breaking and talent that has reached a bigger audience, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, uh, with that said, um, I haven't been able to hold on to everyone who's come through our pipes. Uh, sure. Like I said before, Lil Nas X came up through a muse. Lil Tekka came from a muse. There have been many examples of kind of local talent in local European markets or wherever it could be that started um, on the Amuse platform. So my hope uh, and my expectation on, on our teams is that we can, main, we can hold on to this talent and develop it ourselves. And I think that, you know, uh, you started the conversation, Jay, with, <laughs> with the idea that people, that majors are outsourcing services to external PR firms or whatever more, it could yeah. be. And I think that's to a large extent a result of what happened when the industry shrunk as a part of piracy. And it was never really, you know, the, the offices were never filled again with the same type of overhead that existed pre-piracy. And so all of the majors around the world depend on third party resources. And nothing says that we can't use the same um, radio plugger in uh, at the Atlanta region or, you know, the same digital uh, marketing firm for the UK or whatever it could be. So for us, it's a matter of... Uh, uh, pride, but also strategy uh, to hold on to the talent that come up, it comes up through our pipelines and, yeah. and develop them into as many diamonds as we can. Yeah. So what is your background? Did you ever play music? Did you ever, you know, work in a studio? Is it um, financial? What's your background? So I, I, I mean, music has always been a part of my life. My dad was a hippie. So we grew up singing Country Joe and, and all of those fantastic nice. records from way back when. Um, but um, my mom sang in a choir. My younger brother is in a band. So music has been a part of my life. But I can't say that I came into this industry with a large amount of experience from the, 
from the music space. I started off uh, in the technology industry in 2004 and uh, stumbled into the industry, the record industry in 2010. So I've been a part of it for some 10 years. Yeah. And, um, and uh, yeah, really happy to be here. Well, listen, th this sounds really exciting. It sounds like, you know, one thing that Michael and I talk about a lot these days is innovation. And I think there's the spaces are getting crowded, whether it's streaming, whether it's distribution, it, the way that you rise above all of that is is innovation. And it, what I've read about Amuse is it sounds very innovative. Where can people learn more about you and about Amuse to see if it's the right solution for them? Yeah, I mean, we're, we have a website, amuse.io. Um, there's plenty to read on that site. There's links to some really cool articles that have been written about us. Uh, we try to, you know, uh, promote stuff that um, that could be interesting to people to read about. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. My name is Diego Farias. Feel free to reach out to me there and ask questions if you have anything uh, that you want to ask about Amuse. And other than that, our socials and stuff like that, we're called Amuse everywhere. There's plenty of information to read and and hopefully if people are curious, they, they sign up and try it out or, or give me a shout somewhere so I can convince them uh, on how to, uh, to join our service. But I'm really happy to say that we, we just crossed uh, the million user uh, number. Very, Congratulations. Very Congrats. That's a nice milestone. In a very short period of time. So uh, obviously this is something that uh, people are interested in around the world. And, and uh, yeah, just really excited about that. Well, definitely keep in touch with us and let us know how this is going. We're going to be following uh, following this closely. We, we wish you nothing but success. Uh, it, really exciting stuff, Diego. Plus, you have like the greatest name in show business. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'll tell Max Lusada next time I meet Max. Uh, because he has a really badass uh, name, too. All right. <laughs> Diego, thank you so much for thank joining you, us, Diego. man. Great conversation. Thank you so much, Michael and Jay. Take care. Discmakers.com, use code FREEBIZ for ground shipping on CD orders of 100 units or more, $150 value. I like their innovation, Jay, in that, you know, they're, they're using their distribution platform as, as a farm club yeah. to find yeah. talent that's worth investing more in and signing to a full, full record deal. I mean, yeah. I... It, it's it's great for the artist, but you know, as an entrepreneur and a business person, I'm like, well, that's great too. I mean, it's just a it's a to me, it seems like it's a logical extension for a distributor. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and I really like the the fast forward access of being able to kind of get some predictable income. So let's yeah. say you're generating X amount every month, they're willing to run that through their system and pay you based on your future earnings. And with streaming with that predictability, you can do that. And that's, that's a fairly new thing in, in this business right now when it comes to indie or DIY distribution. And I think it's super cool. Yeah, yeah. Having a, uh, even just a plain distributor that can advance you on future earnings is, is also yeah. really quite innovative. Yeah, yeah. Very cool stuff. We'll be yeah. watching them closely. So, so go, go check out Amuse. You know, if any of our listeners have used them, I'd love to hear what your take is on it. Um, because as we said, you know, it's a crowded space. Distributors are like streaming services. They seem to be everywhere you turn around yeah. and, and it's how they differentiate themselves from everybody else that's, that's going right. to make the difference. And Amuse seems to be really, you know, taking that, that train of thought and going, yeah, we've got to yeah. be different. Yeah. Got to be innovative. Exactly. Yep. yep. Um, so, uh, before we wrap up, just a, a quick shout out. Thank you to all of our supporters and sponsors. Thank you to Hypebot, Bands in Town, Bandzoogle, Disc Makers, all of you. It's, it's, it, we, we appreciate the continued support. Um, and of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, subscribe. If you're on Spotify, follow us and iTunes, subscribe and leave a review and a rating. It, we appreciate it all it. means a lot to us. And uh, that 